So let's talk a little bit about contracts. Sometimes it might be referred to as an agreement or even say a term of service. Now usually contracts like this, they have a lot of words in them and it might be feel a little tedious to read everything, but depending on what the contract is for, it's really important that you read especially the most important parts of the contract because if you don't, you could end up with unexpected consequences. You might end up paying more than you thought, you might be restricting yourself more than you thought, or you might not be getting what you thought you were going to get. So let's think of about a few of the major contracts you're likely to see in your life. You have things like lease agreements. You might be renting from someone, you are leasing an apartment, you're leasing a car, and it'll have what you would expect, how much you are expected to pay, things like what is a deposit, but say you're leasing a car. It might have limitations on how much mileage you put on that car. And if you go above that mileage, they might charge you per mile. That's a pretty important thing to consider if you plan on driving a lot. Your lease agreements for an apartment, it might talk about situations where you might, may or may not allow pets. Can you sublease it to someone else? Let's say if you're going to be away from the apartment for a while. How many people are even allowed to stay in the apartment? Um, what are the policies around noise, around other things? You have to read that fine print because you might realize that there are conditions that are being put, even if the rent looks pretty good, that you might not be able to actually live by or that might restrict you too much or that you have to give a certain amount of notice before you leave the apartment. Make sure that you pay attention to all of these things before you sign those contracts. When you get a job, sometimes you might see an employment contract. Some of that might just say, hey, you're not allowed to share the information from the job with other people, but there might be things like a non-compete clause where even if you leave that job, you're not allowed to compete with the company. So it might restrict what your next job is. So once again, sometimes people say, read the fine print. I would just say, read the print, however fine or not, not fine it might be, just to make sure it's not restricting you. And uh, many times you might just need to ask someone a few questions like, what does exactly this mean, et cetera, et cetera. Now, uh, I already talked about leases. There could also be agreements around loans. It could be student loans. It could be loans for a car. It could be a mortgage. Once again, this someone's going to give you money. They're usually going to put a lot of, or lend you money, I should say. They're usually going to put a lot of restrictions on it, a lot of expectations. You have to look at the interest rates. Under what conditions can those interest rates move? Under what situations might there be some flexibility in payment and what situations might there not be flexibility in payment. So look at all of these things in detail. Insurance policies, you're getting insurance because if heaven forbid something bad happens, your car gets into a wreck or maybe you have to go uh, into the hospital, you're hoping that the insurance is going to be there to cover those expenses. But there might be fine print. They might say, look, we will cover your your, let's say your home, unless it's one of these situations, or we will cover your car unless it is one of these situations, or we'll cover your health insurance unless it's in one of these situations. So you really, once again, have to make sure that that policy is right for you and that you can really sit by the terms and the conditions on it before you sign it. Now, above and beyond that, and there's many, many types of contracts in our life, you might have things like service agreements. When you get a cell phone, you expect to pay a certain amount, but you might see in the fine print that there's other things that might be considered roaming charges, or you're making other types of payments, et cetera, et cetera. At minimum, just to know what you, you can expect to pay, what happens if you want to cancel it? What happens if you want to switch to another carrier? How much are you locked in uh, for into that, that agreement? Your cable, whatever else you're using, your internet service, all of these things, I know it might take a little bit of extra time, but trust me, if you take the time to read it, understand it, ask people questions if, if things are confusing, not only will you be better protected in life, but actually you'll frankly learn a lot about the world. Uh, and you can also even start to think about, okay, well, what, what protection should I make sure I have uh, as opposed to just seeing what are the protections that this person who's drafted the, the contract is coming up with.